Listen to this point. Point two, agreement or unity is very essential in prayer. You got to learn how to pray with agreement and unity. Listen to the point. Agreement or unity is very essential in prayer because, now listen to this, the goal must be the same for both parties. Let me say that again. Agreement or unity is very essential in prayer. Why? Because the goal that you're praying for must be the same for both parties, not just for one and somebody just kind of going along for the ride. The goal must be the same for both parties. If you're believing for healing, then the person you're standing in agreement for, for your healing, has got to have healing in their mind, has got to have experienced healing that knows something about healing and says, you've got to get your goal. I agree 100%. I'm not going to look at your body. I'm going to look at the word of Jesus that he took your infirmity and bad your sickness. By the stripes on Jesus' back, you were healed. See? Both goals or both parties got to have the same goal. Romans chapter 12. Turn with me to it quickly. Listen to the point that you're turning to Romans 12. I don't mean to be rude, but I don't have time to play games. Well, I don't know if it's going to work. It may work and it may not, but I'm going to agree with you. I ain't praying with you because what's going to happen is you're going to try to mix doubt and unbelief with my faith. And then I'm going to eventually get it anyway, but you're going to hinder it for me. And I don't want to hinder nothing. So in other words, the goal must be the same for both parties. Listen to what I'm saying. Agreement or unity is very essential in prayer because the goal must be the same for both parties. The best way to get somebody to get in a divorce is if the goal is the same. If the goal is the same, even though they can't live together, but yet if their goal is, bless God, we love each other, but we can't live together. We love each other, but we can't live with each other. We kill each other, but we love each other. Well, bless God, there's love there. It can be mended and taken care of because the goal is the same for both parties. What you got to do is get the riffraff out between. Listen to my point. Listen to the scripture, Romans chapter 5. Excuse me, Romans chapter 12, verse 5. The Bible says, so we being many are one body. We being many. We being Baptist. We being Catholic. We being Episcopal. We being a Presbyterian. We being Assembly of God, Church of God, Church of Christ, United Pentecost, the full gospel, the word people. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying. So we being many are one body in Christ and every one member one of another. The littlest cut on any part of your body, your whole body knows it. So is it possible? The reason why you're not getting healing is because another member of the same body don't believe in it? Is it a possibility that the reason why you can't figure out why you've done everything God's told you to do, but you can't seem to get an answer? Well, maybe the members of the body are not agreeing with you. Your goals are not the same. The, when the brain tells the foot, walk, I mean, it don't send a response back, it says, no. <laughs> now, let me give you a prime example of that when somebody's in a wheelchair. That mind says, walk. The legs can't, why? Because there's a broke connection somewhere. Because if that motor sensory nerve would go down that spine and hit that central nervous system, it'd send down that to that foot and say, move now. And that foot say, yes, sir. But you see, let me show you how the toe has a brain. Let's say you stomp it. It sends a response to your brain. Holler! <laughs> Hurt! You're not running today. You notice both parties are in agreement. Okay. And how does the healing come? When both parties get in agreement. Not when they're fighting each other. You want a prime example of that? Running on a torn muscle. That muscle is sending responses to that mind. Hey, fool, I'm hurting down here. This will not heal like this. And your mind says, you're going to run anywhere. Until you finally bust that hamstring, 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 and son, you shut down then. Then you get this little, you see, these are these little, these are the voices of your muscles. It's 
It's called throbs. Doo-doom, 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 like, I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. If you'd have listened to me, we wouldn't have this problem. You see, then finally he said, well, I'm not going to run no more for a while till this thing heals. Notice when both parties come together, we being many, or one body in Christ, and everyone's member, one of another, then the member heals. The binding power of the church. It's all within our ability, and everybody's praying for God to do it for us. Everybody's praying, oh, God, do this for me. Do this for me. Remind me of kids. Tie your own shoe. But mom. <laughs> dress yourself. But mom. I don't want to dress myself. Dress me, mama. Please, mama. Come here, boy. <laughs> boy, you know. I, I, I wanted my mom when I was a kid, man. See, I was the baby of the family for six years. I'm seven years older than my youngest brother, six years older than my younger sister. I'm the middle boy. But I was the baby of the family for six years. I didn't like it when my sister came along because she took my attention away, made me mad. I didn't like her. I said, who is this alien? <laughs> she gets my ice cream, gets all my attention. Didn't like it whatsoever. Plotted to kill her. <laughs> Serious. Serious. Almost had her, boy. Had her strangled. She was turning blue. I was six years old. What up? My mama caught me, throwed me across the room. She said, you're killing your sister. I said, what's so amazing about that? I knew that. <laughs> Serious, that's the truth. Because you see, I was Papa's little boy. I was daddy's little boy, mama's little boy. Everybody liked little Jesse. Then Deborah came along, just ruined the whole thing. <laughs> and mama had to sit me down and say, this is your sister. I said, I, you didn't ask me anything about her. I had no say so in this. She told me the start come. I said, you should have shot that bird. <laughs> I'll never forget that mama laugh. I don't want it. But she had the sense, she said, this is your sister. You got to protect her. I said, I'm trying to kill the girl. I ain't trying to protect her. <laughs> Jesse, listen to what I'm saying. I'm serious, boy, I was funny about that, man. Because I had all the attention. I did, see? So she got me to change my mind that her goal and my goal would be the same, that we would both love my sister. And I'll tell you how she did it. She said, when Deborah goes to school and anybody picks on her, you can beat them up. <laughs> Does that sound good to me? <laughs> Been looking for a fight for quite a while. Sure enough, Deborah wasn't on the school bus one day. I said, anybody touch the girl, you're dead. You got it? <laughs> I'll never forget that. I was 12. I pulled a couple of hairs out of my hair and put it on my chest, glued them on there, boy. I didn't have any, but bless God, I was believing. Yeah. And nobody said nothing to my sister. Principal called me and he said, what you fighting for? I said, somebody touched my sister. He said, you need to come talk to me. I said, wrong. I didn't talk to my mama. She's bigger than you. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Boy, he sent me home. Mama had to come back. And he looked at my mama and said, you are bigger than I am. <laughs> she was too. He's a little fella. And she said, Jess, I got to sit down and let me talk to you, son. We got to come together in agreement here. We want you to be a good boy and go to school. She said, well, if somebody hurts your sister, you try to, you go tell the principal. I mean, if you're hurting her, now you stop it if you can. If you can't, but I mean, remember this. There's other people here that's going to take care of that. I said, these people don't believe in that. Man, they're all sitting around eating peanut butter sandwiches, man. I said, I come to school the other day. I know what's happening. I never could, you know, as a kid, you know how kids think they, they don't, you know. Teachers are weird. I mean, who would want to go to a school? <laughs> for eight hours. Think about that. See, that's how a kid thinks, see? But you see, when all the members come together in one mind and one accord, the binding power of the church comes. You just lift up and you bind the principalities of the, of the powers of the air. You shut them down. Then the devil says, we can't move. 
And then the flow of God goes, you're healed, you're blessed in the city, you're blessed in the field, you're blessed going in, you're blessed going out. How do you get that to happen to you? I'll tell you how. Everything's bound around you and the full flow of God's wealth, God's promises, God's love, and God's faith is flowing and hitting you at 100%. That's why you shout and praise God and hallelujah. That's why it's easy when you get around a convention and everybody's praising God and worship's going, wow, what's happening? That power of unity has come together and bang, bound the principalities and the powers trying to hinder that service and the flow just, just comes all over you. Simple, isn't it? But that can be in your everyday life when you're in your car by yourself. Let me give you an example. Elijah came down the street one time, looked at the king, said, I'm going to tell you something. You're, you're nothing but a heathen, demon, devil, dog from hell. He said, according to my word, it's not going to rain for three years. See you later, boy. Bye. Pretty strong words, wasn't it? He said, according to my word, not according to God's. He said, according to my word. And the king said, who is this fool? But six months later, he was looking for him. A year later, he was crying for him. Three years later, he's like, oh my God, he's sending his armies after one preacher. Get that man to put the faucet on. He said, according to my word. What did he do? He bound, he literally bound, you ready for this? The weather. He'd have put Nash Roberts out of business. <laughs> he shut down the clouds. They tried to come over that place. He said, turn left. There'll be no rain here until I say so. What did he do? He physically bound the weather. One man believing in God. Now, how much more can we, when the Bible says, say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be cast in the sea and not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you say shall come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you saith. My Lord, you can now get the clouds. You can get the mountains. Everybody say, yeah, we don't believe that, but it sounds good. <laughs> but it can be done. That's the binding power. That's why the father has sat out and he ain't saying nothing no more. He said, what are these kids hollering for? Don't they know if it, we've already won? Just float. Just go down the, float, go down the river in a tube. Ooh, just float. Sometime you're going to hit a rapid. Mm -hmm. Real fast, and that time you're gonna hit real still water. Just enjoy yourself. Because see, you're gonna win. Jesus said, Be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. The Bible said the prince of darkness has already been judged. What do we got to worry about the devil? So that's why the devil's fighting so much. You know why? He's simply because he's already defeated. So when you understand that in that light, then God's word will work for you in every facet. That's the binding power of the church. Be not weary and well doing for in due season. So I made up my mind, not gonna get weary. Now, got many opportunities to. No, I don't want any. I've got a goal. Me and God's got the same goal. He said, go in the world, I'll do that. Takes a lot of money to go in the world. He's got a lot. I know how to use it. I don't want it for me, but I'll take it off for Jesus. See what I'm saying? So even though the devil says you can't do that, I am gonna knock the bridge out in front of you. Well, that's all right, we can walk on the water. Oh yeah? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna cut a hole where you fall in it. Well, then we'll just jump over it. It's pretty simple, isn't it? It's so simple that the whole church world over the centuries have missed it. You know how they got you to come to church? Fear. If you miss church, God gonna kill you. You better come down here and go to church. You better come confess your sins. If you don't, we ain't gonna pray over you when you dying. Think about it. You better get on here, boy, or we'll excommunicate you. Now, let's face it, 95% of all the people in the South Louisiana is Catholic. And they ain't no, let me tell you something, you ain't voting the priest out. If anybody is going, you going. That's what I like about the Catholics. You don't vote that pastor out. Boy, <laughs> you want the, if anybody's going, you going. I mean, they'll put the whammy on you in a second. Yes, cause people through fear. And not only Catholic, everybody else. Boy, see a woman with a pair of pants on. You going to hell, woman! What'd I do? Pants? <laughs> well, it's better than nothing. <laughs> Shout, at least she's clothed. 
Amazing, huh? When you should have bind the principality and the power of the air and left the person alone. But what we did is bind each other, put ourselves in bondages. All right. No makeup, man. Nothing, son. We're going to look like dirt, but who cares? We're pure. And we bound ourselves so much in doctrine that Jesus couldn't touch us and bless us. Every Sunday we had to pray through. Every Sunday we had to get saved. <laughs> Every Sunday you made your way down to the altar and blew mucus all over it. <laughs> you backslid Monday. I mean, that's a bit gross, but that's the truth, man. Come Monday, Wednesday night, you weren't even around. Saturday night you really blew it, and Sunday you're back at the church. <laughs> I try, I try, I try. God don't want to heal me. Well, the judgment of God is on you. Die, sister. But I'm 32. He never did like you when you was five. That's why he's trying to kill you. <laughs> Good God. And we believe that trash. Sure, how many people know what I'm talking about? Got bound up in that to such a degree you couldn't walk, couldn't move. This is what I'm saying. So it wasn't only just one denomination, it were all of them. If you didn't believe their way, you didn't make it. My, my God. But that's the case, Jesus came to the church. There was only one church in Jesus' day. That's the Pharisaic church, and the Sadducee church, and the Zealot church. They all went to one temple. None of them, all the preachers were backslid. None of them were saved. Jesus said, you have your father, Satan, the devil. Y'all a bunch of snakes and vipers. Now notice this, he didn't tell the people to quit going to the church. He didn't say, don't go to that church. That's a, that's, a, that's a terrible church. Don't go to that church. Bad church. Bad church. Stay away from that church. You notice that? He said, I come that you might have life and that more abundantly. I didn't come to change your church. I come to change you. Because if I change you, your church is going to change. He said, when you see me, you see the Father. He didn't tell you to quit going to the Jewish synagogue. Think about that for a minute. We're trying to suck people out of church. You're going out there. Come on. Well, good God. Maybe God wants them there. You ever thought about that? You know why God sent the Holy Ghost to the Catholics? Because none of y'all would go. <laughs> Don't shout me down when I'm preaching, good. You said, I ain't going down there. They're nothing but a bunch of heathen. Got them rules and all that kind of stuff. Well, praise God. Well, why don't you go down there? You wouldn't go because you thought you was better than them. You was cutting your sister and brother in the Lord. I told you, it's getting tough. This is the binding power of the church. <laughs> yeah, we were fighting each other. My God, people, it's time we grow up. Start listening to the word of the Lord. Start having some love and letting love flow out. Let grace flow out. I don't believe in believing in sin. I, I disagree with sin, but I love the sinner. I hate the sin. I don't disagree. I, I hate that sin. I'll disagree with that sin in front of everybody, but I won't disagree with the sinner. Jesus died for him. See, you understand what I'm trying to say? That's why God sent his pouring out his spirit upon all flesh, because all flesh think they're the only ones in it in the world. There's one church that they, they don't believe nobody's going to heaven except them. They got one church that believes that this is heaven now. That's a dumb church. That's all I can say. That's a, if this is heaven, I don't want it. Why? Because the IRS is here. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't exactly an exciting church today. You understand what I'm trying to say? Listen to this point and I'll close. Don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Come against the spirit that motivates people. I don't fight the person. I fight the spirit that's motivating the person. Listen to my point. Don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Come against the spirit that motivates people to do wrong things. Don't come against the person. Come against the devil. The devil's causing the problem. Do you understand that? The person's not. They're being blind. The Bible says the blind lead the blind. They both fall in the ditch. They're deceived. So you don't see that's just a so and so's an idiot, bozo, brain. You come against the spirit that's motivating that individual. You see what I'm trying to say? The Bible said in Ephesians 6, verse 12, if you want to turn to it, you can. If you're not listening to it, Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So I'm not going to fight my brother. Not me. We wrestle not. We're not going to wrestle. We're not, we've become professional wrestlers, but we shouldn't be. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? But against principalities. That's Ephesians 6, verse 12. Against powers. That's a, 
That's a second class of devil. Against rulers of the darkness of this world, that's a third class of devils. Against spiritual wickedness in high places, that's the fourth class of devils. So you got principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Different classification of devils, just like they got different classifications of angels. They got cherubs, they got archangels, they got regular angels, they got the wheel in the wheel. My God, they got 24 elders, they got a beast with all kind of eyes turning around. You can see everything all all around. I mean, God's created all different kind of creatures. See? So what are we fighting? Not sister so-and-so. We don't wrestle with her. She's made of flesh and blood. But against the principality that's motivating a woman. So uh, you know what you need? You know how to get rid of that? You don't need to tell her nothing. You need to go home and rebuke and bind that devil that's motivating her. All of a sudden one day she'll come up to you and say, I just don't know why I act the way I did. And you don't have to say, well, you idiot. No, you say, well, praise God. You saw the light of what we was trying to say. Yeah, well, hallelujah, glory to God. See, she may not even realize that you bind that devil that was motivating her. You bind that principality and power. See, that's the binding of the church. In other words, when I'm casting a devil out of a person, I don't talk to the person. I don't talk to the man. Say, hello, how you doing? My name is Justin Plants. Would you like to get rid of that devil inside of you? I don't say that. I said, devil, get the hints now. I don't talk to the man. I talk to the devil. I, mo I motivate that spirit to leave that man's body. When that spirit's gone, then I can talk and reason with that man. I'll get him saved and filled with the spirit of God. But until that devil's gone, bless God, that devil ruling that man. So I come against the motivating factor that's making him do wrong things. A prostitute is not a prostitute. It's the spirit of prostitution causing her to do that. Get rid of that lustful demon. And you got a nice lady. Get rid of that lustful demon in that man. And you got a nice man. Same thing, just different sex. Most men are prostitutes anyway, they're not safe. They'll prostitute themselves in a second. And they think they're Johnny Cool. We're cool, Jack. But you see, there's nothing wrong with the man. It's the spirit that's motivating that man. So you bind that principality, that power, that spiritual ruler, that high wickedness. You get rid of that person, you get rid of that devil, that person will line up with God. You, don't, you want scripture for it? Mary Magdalene. God, Jesus got rid of, she had seven lustful spirits. And Jesus got rid of them all. And that woman was one of the most gracious women of the Lord you ever saw or ever will hear about. Why? Because Jesus came against the spirit that was motivating that woman. When Jesus cast the devils out of the man of uh, uh, Gadara, he noticed he didn't talk to the man. He cast the devils out the man. When he released the man, the man said, can I follow you? He said, no, go on home and tell your friends about what great things God has done for you. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So come against the devil that's motivating, causing problems. Not the person we wrestle, not against flesh and blood. Now, let me say this and, and I'll close. Our weapons are spiritual weapons and not natural weapons. Be strong in God and not in yourself. We use spiritual weapons. Now, natural weapons, we sometimes try to cut people's guts out with our natural weapons. But I'm going to tell you one thing right now, Jack. You better line up or get out. So that's not a spiritual weapon. That's a natural weapon. You're going to hurt that man's feelings. You want to hurt somebody, hurt the spirit that's motivating that individual. You leave that man intact. See, you kill the doubt in that man, but you say, you kill the doubt, but you save the man. You leave the man whole. But what happened is over the centuries, we've cut the man up with the doubt. We dissected the individual and hurt people so much that you probably know some people right here in this Alma that would never walk across the church, never go across the church door anymore. Why? Because they've been hurt by somebody in the church. How many of you people know of people like that? Hold your hand up, be honest. Now what happened to that individual? The person attacked the individual instead of attacking the spirit that motivated the individual to do that. Did you understand what I'm trying to say? And what happened is then people said, I'll have nothing to do with church no more. And they walked away from it. My God, that's a lost soul. Jesus desperately needs that individual for, for his kingdom, the binding power of the church. So what I've learned to do is bind the power that's motivating the individual. So my point is, don't lose something in your life you've already bound because the time factor. Agreement or unity is very essential in prayer because the goal must be the same for both parties. Don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Come against the spirit that motivates the people to do wrong things. And finally, our weapons are spiritual weapons and not natural weapons. Don't take a natural weapon, which is a tongue, and cut somebody's guts out. You cut the devil away from that individual. And I'll close
close with this. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter four, quickly. Hebrews chapter four, I wanna show you something. This is, well, how do I cut, how do I get rid of the devil without hurting a person? Right here, Hebrews chapter four. Hallelujah, Jesus, right here. Hebrews chapter four, you there? Say, so how can I cut the devil? How can I stop people from aggravating me when I know it's the devil aggravating them? I don't wanna hurt the individual, but I wanna get that aggravating spirit away from me, right here. Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word of God, there it is. My God, you got 19 Bibles in your house. For the word of God is quick, which is, makes alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Notice this, the reason why you aggravated with that person because that devil has a two-edged sword. But Jesus said his sword is sharper than any two-edged sword. Did you, just read, did you just get that in the scripture? For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So there must be other swords or other two-edged swords that the word of God is sharper than. You got it? For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Listen to this. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. There's a devil in the soulless realm. If there's a devil in the spirit realm, you can get that out too. My God. And listen to this, and of the joints, my God, if a spirit of infirmity has attached itself to somebody's body, like that lady, and Jesus said, be loose, like a crippling arthritis that the devil wants to destroy somebody. You can loose that devil from the joints and the marrow, and of the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, or the word heart there means spirit man. There's your answer. We'd have never had a church split if somebody would have read Hebrews 4.12. We would have never had a split. Did you know that? We would have never had splits in our lives at all if somebody would have read Hebrews 4.12, not only read it, meditated on it, and studied it. We'd, all it had to do is cut the spirit that was motivating the individual. Got the spirit out, bless God, we'd have had problems. It sounds good, Brother Jesse, but it don't work. Well, the reason why, we've learned to cut people. And what's so amazing, you, <laughs> most amazing thing to me about the church, they'll excommunicate you except for your wallet. They'll take your money. They don't want you, but they want your money. Isn't that amazing? Well, if you're no good, then your money isn't. Amazing, huh? Oh, isn't that amazing? They don't want the sinner, but a prostitute will come and say, look, I want to give $100, but bless God. Thank you. But listen, honey, now we don't want you, you know, you don't come in the church like that. Oh, but you'll take her $100 dirty money that she made last night, huh? Yeah, but we pray over it. Why don't you pray over her? You get my point, what I'm trying to say here? That's why Jesus offended so many people. He rebuked the spirit that motivated the people. He said, Pharisees, you snake and viper. You have your father, Satan, the devil. My God, they said, stone him. Then Jesus goes to the cross and died for the same man he called a snake. He didn't call the man the snake. He called that lying demon that was motivating that preacher to do that. I could have got very mad just a few days ago, I had somebody steal something from me. Irritated me. $5,000. I could have got really perturbed. <laughs> or fashe. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I, I deserved it. You know, have you heard people say, I deserve a nervous breakdown. You ever hear people tell you? you, ever hear people, you they got little signs in the house. I've earned it, it's mine. If I want a nervous breakdown, you just leave me alone. <laughs> then when they get a nervous breakdown, they say, God, why'd you give me a nervous breakdown? Well, you've been reading it every day in your bathroom for 10 years. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Isn't it crazy? That's wild, but people got that. I was just in a preacher's home. Did you see that, Fritz? Yeah, <laughs> look at Fritz, oh, Lord, get me. Did you see that? I, I spit at that thing. And I told that woman, what's the matter with you, man? What is wrong with you? I deserve, oh, it's just a joke. Jokes will become reality. You ever heard somebody joke on the square? What that means? They're joking, but they're, they're meaning what they say? Yeah, see, listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, and you know, if you think about it, meditate on it, that thing will get your spirit, you get hot, then you sin, then you gotta ask Jesus to forgive you. And sometimes it'll come blowing up. I said, I'll tell you one thing. And the Lord said, I take care of that, Jess. Okay, okay. Get out of here, devil. You see? Come against the spirit, not the individual. It'll work every time. That's the binding power of the church. 
Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.